I, I, I feel like I feel like every time I try to do these live streams, like there's always a segment that ends up being like COVID updates. <laughs> like I don't want it to be all about COVID nineteen, but it's but it's like okay, yeah, I guess that's the thing we got to do. <laughs> Because it's not like it's going away anytime soon. So, um, so Europe is seeing resurgences in in, in COVID nineteen, and that's that's been uh, all over the news. Everybody's kind of been talking about it a whole bunch. So, uh, Europe is seeing three hundred thousand deaths. They hit they hit three hundred k in Europe, uh, which is a big fucking deal. Uh, United States hit or or is close to hitting that. Um, that's an, by the way, that's like an entire continent that hit 300K, and as a country, we're close to hitting it. And I know population is is different in Europe. There's there's less people over there than here, but still, like greatest country on earth. Like we couldn't figure out how to deal with this shit better. Like we couldn't just be better about it. Um, maybe like listen to what other countries did that fucking. <laughs> <laughs> that like successfully, you know, quelled the virus for a little while. I don't know. Just a thought. Who am I though? Who am I? I'm just some. I'm just some fucking silly comedian uh, with a cat. That's all. That's that's. So what do I know? <laughs> right. Um, but uh, uh, they when they initially did the lockdown measures in Europe. This, but this, by the way, uh, this story is. But the last two stories are coming from the World Socialist website, I believe, is what it's called, or, or yeah, World Socialist website. Um, the lockdown measures led to two trillion euros uh, pumped into European corporations. So, ju so just, so just, so just like you know, what we did in the states. Uh, we pumped trillions of dollars into into the banking industry. The Fed just kind of came up with money, and then they were like, "Boom! Corporations, banking industry, Wall Street. You guys are funded. You guys are ready to go. You guys are doing all right." Um, and then when it came to the people, they were like, "Well, where's the money going to come from?" And it's like maybe the money that you magically made up for corporations. Do you think you can just magically make it up for the people? And they were like, "Bootstraps. You gotta think about the bootstraps. You know." Those those Wall Street bankers, guys, they really earned it by stealing bootstraps from the working class. They really earned that handout from the government. <laughs> uh, and then Europe did the same thing. They uh, There were countries in Europe that sent um, essential workers, right? That's what they called them. They called them essential workers. They sent them back to work while the numbers were still going up. Because economy, right? The the economy is important. We got to revitalize the economy. We got to do that. Uh, now, in July, the WHO warned about a resurgence, and there were a bunch of scientists that were saying it too, because they were like, "Look, this thing thrives in in lower temperatures, anywhere between forty to fifty. That's what it likes." And now, you know, the summer is coming up, and the numbers will probably go down because more people can be outside. There's more sun. You know, we're, we're not cooped up indoors with central air and this, that, and the third. And, uh, and they were like, what are we going to do in the fall? Like, how are we going to deal with this thing when it comes back in the fall? Because even when you look at the 1918 Spanish flu, the first wave did kill a lot of people. But the real heavy hitter was wave number two. Um, and this is part of the thing that viruses do, right? They mutate, they change, they they become something. Uh, they don't become something completely different, but they but they learn how to be more resistant to the th to to different things that we um, that we come up with to throw at them, right? So, uh, but the WHO warned about it. Scientists warned about it. A bunch of people warned about it. Uh, Italy's prime minister came out and said, "Hey, uh, the lockdown shouldn't be our first choice." It's really not good for the economy. And this is recent that he said this, which is crazy to me. It's fucking crazy to me, right? Because it, the entire argument within capitalism has been this Sophie's choice between public health and the economy. Rather than having that conversation together and try to figure out how to help the working class, help the people of whatever country you're a part of, and make sure that public health concerns are taken care of instead of an either or 
right? Like instead of making people be like, well, you can be safe or you can make money and be able to pay your bills. And it's like, that should not be a choice that's ever made, especially, and, it, and it's crazy because again, capitalism is a system that constantly preaches that it's incredible, that it's the best, that it's fucking saved so many people's lives, right? Like it, it is it is the greatest system that to, to have ever been conceived by anybody ever. And it saves everybody's lives. There's less poverty and there's less hunger and uh, everybody is is doing really great under capitalism, but yet here we are in a moment where capitalism can thrive and can prove itself to be as good as it claims it is, it can't manage to do it. It can't manage to feed people and keep them safe at the same time. And I think this pandemic has really proven that because it's a choice between the economy or public safety, that capitalism continues to be the largest public health issue in our society. Corporations on a global level got a bailout. On a global level got a bailout. The working class and small businesses didn't. They suffered and they, they continued to grind and they continued to hustle and figure out different ways. Uh, at, at least in, in, in Europe, they did, you know, kind of realize that they needed to give people something. They needed to give people some kind of a UBI, some kind of a cash stimulus to keep things going so that, you know, we're not seeing people uh, homeless and running on the streets. We're not seeing uh, mass uprisings over there um, and so on and so forth. And But in America, they were like one $1,200 check. That's good, right? In the Depression era, that would have been really good money. So you should think about it in that case. If you were if you were alive in 1929, you would be pretty well off for like five years, right? And it's just like, how fucking out of touch are these fucking politicians like Steve Mnuchin and Nancy Pelosi, these fucking hundred millionaires? They're like, we'll give them the pittance, the pittance, they can make the pittance stretch, right? What's the cost of bread? The cost, when I was a kid, a cost of bread was a nickel. I haven't been a kid since 1923. But it's like, like that's where they, they just don't have any conception. Wages have been stagnant. Prices of things have been going up. That's inequality. And then they perpetuated more inequality by handing out a one $1,200 check. At least in Europe, some of these countries were willing to, to, to give people a universal basic income. And then you had countries like Spain that were like, yo, we're going to fucking make this permanent. So that in the, in the case of an emergency, like nobody has to go hungry. Nobody has to be evicted. But in America, they're like, fuck it, let's evict the people. That's how Nancy Pelosi got rich. And where does COVID-19 run rampant? It runs rampant in, uh, in homeless communities. That's where it runs rampant. And it sucks because now we're creating more homelessness. And... Uh, I drive to the side gig, you know, three times a week, and I am definitely seeing a lot more people with signs out just saying, hungry, anything will help. Homeless, anything will help. And I hate it because I want to give these people, like, something. Like, I usually do anyway. Like, I'll, I'll, I have food in my car that I will, you know, I'll, I'll bundle some up and hand it out the window. But now I'm a little nervous, especially with the cases rising. I work with an elderly person. I have people at home that work with the general public that also work with elderly people. So it's like, I can't even do the thing that <laughs> I want to do to help the people that need the help. Um, you know, so, but it sucks. It really, really sucks. The reality of this thing with, within capitalism is, you know, cause they always ask like where the money is going to come from. We have all the resources. We have the cash flow. There is all this money that governments can put out there to help the people. It's just that they choose not to. The resources are available, but they don't get allocated to the right spots. So then who gets left behind is we the people while the corporations get bailed out and they survive and they do really fucking well. That's, that's really how that works out. Uh, I'm going to look at a couple of your comments. 
Anthony, seems like every time uh, there's a court decision that rules against net neutrality immediately following my internet slows down as <laughs> if we were trying to silence us with normal internet beforehand. I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, capitalism only helps ones with capital. Yeah, there's a um, there's a big story that uh, that I, I was reading earlier today about uh, where they were talking about human capital, and I want to do a whole bigger kind of breakdown of that. But you know, that's what it is. E everything kind of has a, a dollar sign on it, and and that's also the core of like global neoliberalism is how can we take these ideas and these people um, and and use their marginalized life experiences and turn it into profit, turn it into capital. Uh, they have enough to bail out billion dollar corporations, but not the working class. Yeah, and and uh, Holly points it out here. It's political will, right? I, I I do think that they have the amount of money to bail out the working class. It's just they choose not to do it. Um, that's that's really what it boils down to is they choose not to do it because they could have very easily said, okay, trillion dollar stimulus. How much? How like? They were giving. They were giving. The Federal Reserve was giving uh, uh, banks and in, in like I think like a trillion dollars a day or something like that for for fourteen days to help them like uh, keep up with the amount of people that weren't able to to pay their bills. Something along those lines, like which is which is insane. But why couldn't they do that for the people, right? Why couldn't they sit there and say, well, why don't we look at this entire month and say? Uh, let's let's flood about two trillion dollars into the American populace over the course of two months. How much how much money would that be per person? Is that enough to help them out? You know, but they but they, that's not what they they don't think uh, they don't think like that. Uh, the defense budget gets seven hundred billion dollars every time, and they don't even blink. Yeah, you're right. They don't. Uh, the defense budget is is, but that's part of the military industrial complex, which is like corporations that blow shit up <laughs> so so so, it's a, so again it's just like yeah the pentagon's budget is huge and the military industrial complex budget is huge the dod's budget is huge veterans affairs almost gets nothing um because fuck that shit what well, i think i missed one of your comments uh in my in my schooling they describe students as human capital in my school book yeah that's that's what the education industry looks at students as they look at they look at it as human capital um and and it's the same thing in europe i mean they they two trillion euros to bail out corporations uh and yeah they put some ubi in in place but how much of that ubi was truly helping people and now we're th this is the other thing that kind of trips me up is you had since july uh you had knowledge since july that this was going to happen and yet you did nothing to to, re to, to help the situation, to make the situation better. Uh, so, you know, it, it's, it's again, it's short-sighted. It's lack of foresight. It's, it's, it comes down to that all the time. Hey, what's up, everybody? Thank you guys so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed the content in this video, make sure you like, subscribe, and share. My content is highly suppressed because this is not topics of conversation that uh, that the corporate mainstream media really wants to 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 address here. So make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Uh, sign up for my email list. Uh, uh, that way you'll get weekly uh, uh, emails with all of the podcasts and all of the videos that I put out there. Um, and make sure you go to my website and follow me there, uh, krishmohanhaha.com. That's going to be your one-stop shop for all things Krish Mohan. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. See you in the next video.